You're listening to Big World Network. Delroy vs. the Ishtari, Season 2, Episode 9, Revenge. Written and read by Baron Stevens. Now I hope there is no boo-hooing. After all, Minx was an obnoxious, ancient, poorly programmed butler bot. He was a pain in the butt in oh so many ways. But he'd also been my best friend for the last several months. He'd stoically put up with my abuse and obeyed every one of my orders to the best of his incompetent ability. Bless his little metal heart. My eyes started to mist as I looked down on his broken body. Stupid bot, I muttered as I stood up, wiping my eyes with my sleeve. Anger surged within me. Years of frustration and missed dreams burst out of me like a volcano after taking a laxative. Don't worry, Minx. I shall avenge you. I slung the laser rifle over my shoulder and saw one more unfired crossbow on the ground near me. I hefted it up with my newfound adrenaline rush and charged toward the dome building. I was ready to tear apart the next monster foolish enough to cross my path. As I bound through the doorway, I looked about to see an empty reception area. I slowed down and continued more cautiously. At the far end was a large, round doorway. I entered a giant room. At first I couldn't figure out its purpose until I saw the glistening metallic cutting implements lying out on trays. A shudder went through me when I realized I was in the main banquet room. I found a side door and entered another kitchen, except this one was a lot larger than the one I'd had my close encounter with becoming an hors d'oeuvre in. I must have eliminated the last Ishtari and bots assigned to prepare the meal when they came outside. I next checked the food washing room and all the ovens, but there was no sign of the men. I took that to be a good thing. Now I just had to figure out where they were. I went through another door and found a corridor that ran around the perimeter of the dome. Since I didn't see any other places for the men to be held, I assumed that they must be somewhere along this hall. My pent-up frustration erupted out of me and I let out a battle cry as I charged. It wasn't until I reached the far side of the building that I found any sign of life. A really big sign. Standing in front of a closed door stood the biggest, meanest, shelliest Ishtari I'd seen to date. The dastardly beast was armed with two of those crossbow rifles, and it was waiting for me. One projectile smacked into the wall next to my head as the creature took aim with the other gun. I dove around the curve in the wall as the second whizzed past me. Okay, so running through the building and screaming like a banshee with a wedgie wasn't such a good idea after all. Another projectile thunked into the wall. That Ishtari warrior must have been the record holder as the fastest reloader in the galaxy. Chitinous feet scraped across the floor as the giant lobster headed toward me. I only had seconds to bend down and aim my crossbow over my knee. The Ishtari came into view. I fired. I missed. The stupid thing had crouched down so that my shot went over its head. Okay, maybe it wasn't so stupid. I threw my crossbow at it. The gun flew about a grand total of six inches and clattered harmlessly to the floor at the feet of my foe. Both of my enemy's crossbows pointed at my head. Since there was nowhere to run, I closed my eyes and waited for my doom. My life flashed before my eyes didn't make me feel any better when I realized that I'd been a miserable little cuss the whole time. Who would miss me? Who would cry and wail at my sudden and unfortunate death? Stella, maybe? Who was I kidding? I was just a paycheck to her. Okay, my mom might shed a tear or two. The Ishtari's guns fell to the floor. I opened my eyes to see its shell splitting apart to reveal its large mouth. As it opened, the monster leaned toward me. A long, slimy tongue shot out and wrapped around my face, holding me in place. The mouth grew wide enough to engulf my head and shoulders. The next thing I knew, I was trapped in a dark, wet environment. My left arm was pinned in front of me while my right arm was twisted and stuck behind my back. I couldn't move as I was sucked into the lobster. In spite of my never contributing to the benefit of humanity, I wanted to live. I needed to survive so that I could make a difference in the universe, to prove that I wasn't a loser. Oh, and to show Stella that I was the man of her dreams. My right hand brushed against the trigger guard of the blaster rifle strapped at my back. An idea came to me. I stretched my shoulder around so that my finger could reach the trigger. I hoped the safety was off as I found the trigger and pushed it. The blaster fired into the Ishtari's innards. It let me go as a horrendous scream bellowed out from its bowels. 
The sound was deafening, forcing me to fall back and cover my ears. It continued its shrill death cry for a minute before it finally slumped to the floor, unmoving. I lay there panting and covered in Ishtari juice. I couldn't believe I'd just survived another near-eaten experience. The energy and anger that had propelled me forward had now dissipated. My arms and legs trembled as I forced myself back up. I knew I had to keep moving if I was going to save the prisoners and escape with my life. And if there were any other Ishtari or bots in the vicinity, they would have heard all the ruckus. I scraped a layer of slime off my face as I staggered toward the door the Ishtari had been guarding. It was locked, so I unslung the blaster rifle and fired at it until it opened. Once it did, I stumbled through the open door and into a large, dark room. "'Who are you?' a man asked. "'I'm Rex Blademaster. I'm here to rescue you.' I'm not sure what happened after that, since I was busy passing out. When I came to, bright sunlight hit my face, and I felt myself being carried. Hold it, hold it, I said. Put me down. I can walk, I think. The two men who were carrying me set me down. One of them helped me stand up on my wobbling legs. Are you okay there, Rex? Yeah, I just got a little too up close and personal with the Nashtari. Yeah, we saw what was left. That was pretty awesome, the way you pried its mouth open and forced your blaster into it. Pure genius. Yeah. I looked around and saw that we were barely out of the dome. Most of the prisoners were blinking up at the sun and trying to get their bearings. There were well over a hundred of them, wearing torn rags that were hard to recognize as at one time being clothing. It looked like they hadn't bathed in months. Smelled that way, too. Do you have an escape ship? The man next to me asked. I pointed at the cruise ship. If enough of you know how to fly that, it should be warmed up and ready for launch. Awesome work, Mr. Blademaster, another man said. Several others who heard me let out a whoop of joy. I had done it. I had finally accomplished something good. I could now die happy. My mom would be so proud. I examined the faces of those near me. Are any of you named James and married to a cute young bride named Trina? A wiry man with brown, curly hair spoke up. I am. Is she okay? Yes, she wanted me to come find you. The man came toward me, excitement on his face. She's alive then? She's safe? Yes, sort of. She's on board a ship being chased by the Ishtari fleet, but other than that, fine. He put his hand on my shoulder. Thank you, thank you. He gripped hard as I saw him close his eyes and wrestle with his emotions. After several seconds, he opened his watery eyes and said again, Thank you. He let go of my shoulder. It was the best paycheck I'd ever received in my whole life. I felt a little embarrassed, though, so I cleared my throat and pointed at the cruise ship again. Let's get going. Are some of you crew members of that ship? Several of them nodded as we started toward it. While walking past the storage pods, I glanced over at the dead remains of Minx. Could someone help me with this? James said, I will. Is he yours? Yeah, what's left of him. He knelt next to Minx and looked at the damage. Hmm. The power cell has been hit, but it looks like the central processor and memory are still fine. If I had some parts, I could get him running again. Really? I couldn't believe hearing that made me feel so excited. You know how to fix bots? I paid my way through college by working in a bot repair shop. Awesome. There are lots of 300 series parts back on the cruise ship, but they might have a few blaster holes in them. That shouldn't matter. Most 300 series parts are compatible with these old 100 series bots, though not as good of quality. They don't make them like they used to. Yeah, that's what Minx tried to tell me. We picked Minx up by his shoulders and rolled him toward the ship. As we walked, James said, Rex, if there's ever anything I can do for you, just ask. I owe you my life. I tilted my head toward Minx. Fix this stupid contraption, I'll call it even. Soon, our entire party reached and boarded the cruise ship. Those who had been members of the crew went straight to the bridge with me. James came as well, towing Minx behind us. The crew took positions behind the various control consoles, and soon we were lifting off. We were home free. One of the crew members turned to me and asked, Are you a captain, sir? I looked down at the captain's uniform I still wore. Of course, I just sworn to myself that I would turn over a new leaf in life and become a better person. I answered, why, yes. Yes, I am. Captain Rex Blademaster, Captain of the Rutherford's Revenge, at your service. The man nodded. Good. Our captain and all the officers were killed right after we were captured. 
What heading should I set, sir? That was a good question. Common sense dictated that we should flee from the Ishtari as fast as possible. But I had a mission to fulfill. I had to find a way to stop this war. Scan for the Earth battleship Ulysses. We need to head for them. The man nodded and checked his scanners. I found them. It looks like it's surrounded by several other ships. Should I set course? Yes. I turned around to see James taking apart one of the bots I'd shot. How's it going? I asked. It's going fine. I've found a functional power cell. All I have to do is swap it out and he'll be as good as new. Once he finished removing the power cell, James went over to where we'd left Minx and, using some tools he'd found somewhere, began to take Minx apart. I love these old 100 series bots. They have a lot better personalities than these new units. If you say so. We continued our course toward the Ulysses for three hours. James worked on Minx the entire time. Finally, he closed up the front of Minx's chassis and asked, Are you ready for me to turn him back on? Sure. I stood up from where I had been sitting and watching the monitors and walked over. James pushed a couple of buttons on Minx's side. The LEDs came back on and a smile appeared on the screen. I'm alive? His hands went up to where the projectile had struck him. There was still a hole there, but James had removed the projectile and had bent the metal back in place so that there wasn't a gaping opening anymore. Minx looked up at me. Oh, hey there, Dunglehead. Hey, you miserable little messed up trash compactor. I turned to James. I don't suppose there's a way for you to input a new passcode. He's picked up a few bad habits. James shook his head. It requires a special machine. I faced Minx again and pointed my finger at him. Don't you ever get yourself shot and killed again, okay? I shall endeavor not to repeat that event. It was not pleasant. His head tilted as he regarded me. Do I detect a hint of concern in your voice? No. It's just that if something happened to you, who would make me my fine gourmet dinners? You could always try the frozen food section of a grocery mart. One of the crewmen at the controls let out an expletive. We all turned to see what the problem was. The screen in front of us showed a huge space battle taking place. An impressive fleet of Earth ships had joined the Ulysses. Unfortunately, they were losing significantly to the Ishtari fleet. It looked like most of our ships were dead or dying. In the middle of it all, the Ulysses spun out of control as a humongous Ishtari royal ship bore down on it. presentation of Big World Network. Visit us on bigworldnetwork.com for more free weekly series or follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thanks for listening. Listening to Big World Network.